world headquarters of common sense. Talk radio. Uh, first up, though, let's talk about that uh, NATO summit uh, in uh, Brussels, already taking place. We've already had the photo up, and this, of course, to discuss what's happening in Ukraine. And uh, let's talk to Jason Miller. He's a former chief spokesman for President Donald Trump. He's also CEO of Getter, the anti-cancel culture social media platform. Good morning to you, Jason. Julia, good morning. Really, thank I'm, you for having I'm, me. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I want to talk to you about NATO first, but there's definitely some cancel culture stories I want to get to as well. Um, we've got Joe Biden turning up at this this summit, the G7 and the NATO summit, and attending the European summit as well. And there's going to be a lot of talk about red lines and what Vladimir Putin can't do in Ukraine. Um, given that Joe Biden was the vice president to Barack Obama when he set out that red line on use of chemical and biological weapons in Syria in 2013, and nothing happened when he did. Is anything that Joe Biden says today going to be taken seriously by Vladimir Putin? No, not at all. And I think Putin definitely has Biden's number, not only from the example you listed for Syria, but also when Putin took Crimea under the Obama-Biden administration. But then I think really Putin made his decision to go into Ukraine when he saw the way that Biden fumbled Afghanistan. Certainly that was a case where many Brits, for example, I think were let down and felt that they were uh, sold out by the way that the U.S. in very hastily and sloppy fashion left Afghanistan. But the decision has already been made here. And I think that this is not exactly exactly a Churchillian moment for Biden to come in and say, I'm going to put more sanctions on your lawmakers. That's not going to put the fear of God into Putin or deter him in the slightest. No, there's no doubt the economic sanctions are having a hit. And of course, they're far bigger than than I think we in the West expected they would be uh, and that Vladimir Putin expected them to be. But that's kind of the problem of the, the failure of diplomacy, isn't it? Um, they, they should, they, they should, he should have been fearing Vladimir Putin that they would be this, uh, this hit big. The key reason why he went in on the exactly a month ago was he didn't think the West was going to do very much because we haven't acted over Crimea particularly. We didn't really act over, over Syria. We didn't do anything about Chechnya. I mean, a few economic sanctions and uh, expelling some diplomats here and there. The reality is the West has basically said to Vladimir Putin and let's face it, Xi Jinping in China as well, do what you want. We're not really going to be bothered. Well, that's a, a brilliant point because that is the one benefit that I think President Trump brought with regard to foreign diplomacy is he always kept many of the foreign adversaries on their toes. He kept them guessing. In fact, breaking news out this morning is that Kim Jong-un has fired another test missile mm. out of North Korea. And so not only are we dealing with Putin and yep. with Xi, but now we have to worry about Kim back on the scene as well. And I, I'm glad that you brought up <clears throat> President Xi as well because she is sitting back and watching what Putin is doing with Ukraine to game out what he's going to do with Taiwan. Taiwan. And at this point, it, we're all but laying out the red carpet saying, if you want Taiwan, you can go and have it. Yeah, um, you, well, yeah I mean, that's certainly the message I think that is being sent there. Um, let's talk about your other role as a CEO of Getter, the anti cancel culture social media platform. Um, we are, I think, in extraordinary times where I'm, I'm finding myself asking politicians, including the Chancellor of the Exchequer, Rishi Sunak, earlier today, talk about war and, and, and debt and things. But I'm sorry, as a woman, still feeling the need to ask him, what a woman is, uh, the Prime Minister being asked, uh, the leader of the opposition, um, is the inability to say what a woman is, which is an adult human female. Um, basically, you know, it, there's some of the things that you could say about this on things like Twitter, the social media that I'm on, which will get you banned. Um, simply, if I say, you know, if I said, you know, well, a trans trans woman isn't a woman, that could actually get you banned on social media. Um, Joe Biden, um, his deputy Kamala Harris and others, they're fully signed up to this, aren't they? Are the American people? Well, American wokeism, I think, is by far the worst export we've ever had as a country. And so yeah, on behalf, thanks for on that, behalf Jason. of Americans... I have to. I have to apologize. Uh, and we also gave you Meghan Markle too, which uh, is again that's uh, maybe maybe I'm 0 for two this morning. So I really have some grievances to uh, uh, to atone for. Uh, but no. But the fact is, is identity politics is ruining the West. It's making us weak as a civilization. Not just in the U.S. Not just what we've spread to other countries. But the fact of the matter is that you have people who are dying in Ukraine. You see these uh, the brutal assault going on in Mariupol, and here we are talking about people who want to identify as some gender other than what they were born as. In the United States, there's a massive row in recent days. Uh, there's a Twitter uh, feed called the Babylon Bee. They're similar to the Onion, but very family yeah. friendly. And they put out a political satire piece that they named Rachel Levine, who's our Surgeon General, a trans woman. Uh, they named her Man of the Year. And that got them banned from Twitter. And then it got Tucker Carlson and Charlie Kirk and a bunch of and other members of the American right 
kicked off of Twitter because they echoed similar thoughts. Yeah. So not only are they coming for free speech, they're coming for political satire. And the fact that we're even having all these debates about identity politics when it affects such a small fraction of the population, ignoring massive things such as immigration and inflation, $7 a gallon uh, at the pump. That's really, I think, why we're, we're losing as a society. Yeah, and, and I think politicians who who, who don't understand that the, uh, the, the most sane members of the public think this is all in genuinely mad, um, I think they are they are going to find that an awful lot of people are going to be speaking out at the next elections. Of course, we've got midterm elections in the United States coming up, of course, which is going to be very interesting to watch. No doubt we'll talk to you again about that nearer the time.